Welcome back, AFL Fantasy Freak fam. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. If you like AFL Fantasy content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. In this video, guys, I'm going to be talking about my round three, how I went, my general review of the round, what I saw, and what I'm looking to do going into next week. Enjoy the video, guys. Overall, round three wasn't a fantastic round for me by any means. In a round where a lot of teams managed to score 2100 plus, I was sitting here with a measly 1966, which in turn meant that I slid in rank a little bit to 1112, I believe. While I'm not too disappointed at this, there were a few players that did let me down. So I'll start off with my positives for this round. Darcy Parrish absolutely redeemed himself. I said last week that whilst he was bitterly disappointing, injuries to Coldwell and Shield meant that I thought he would get that midfield role and bounce back with 100 plus this week. And he met my expectation, but went above and beyond and scored a 117. So I couldn't be more happy with him. He looks like a great, unique mid-price option going forward as well. So, as for my next positive, Tim Taranto. Now, Tim in round one played a lot forward. He attended 33% centre bounces, but in round two and three, we've seen those CBAs go back up. And with Cornelio now injured long-term, I think Taranto is going to be in the midfield a lot. And we should see him start pumping out big scores like he did on the weekend with a 127. That's what I'd love to see from guys like him. And he should continue to score well in the next few rounds. So well done, Tim. As for Nick Hind. So Nick Hind, at this stage of the round, I'd already been a force trade down with Jared Witts. Nick Hind. Gets a head knock, comes off the field. I'm thinking, fuck me, here we go. Second force trade, we're halfway through the week. But absolute trooper he is. Came on, missed a bloody whole quarter almost. Comes on, pumps like 37 in the last quarter to get to 97 for the game. So absolute legend in the good books this week. And probably the pick of the season for me. So great starting pick by myself. The next two blokes, Sam Doherty, Tom Stewart. Both these guys have been playing more defensive roles this year, and they've also relinquished their kicking duties to uh, quite some extent. So their scoring hasn't been the greatest, but both of these guys turned up for the first time this week, so I'm happy to see that, and hopefully we can see that going forward as well. As for my negatives, the first one I just mentioned his name, but Jared Witts. That was a real stinger. Wits was looking to be a great pick this year, but really hurt this round with Grundy going so big and gone as well. I contribute a lot of my rank slide this week and my poor score just to the fact that I had Wits over these two premium rough options. And obviously it gives me a force trade this week, which is less than ideal. My next negative is Hayden Young. A lot of coaches have him, so it's not too bad as most people will be dealing with this situation, but the negative out of the situation comes from the fact that I was going to trade Young regardless this week. So now a lot of coaches will be forced into it, whereas I was hoping to get that upper hand by getting off him early. Poor score, probably wasn't going to score much more as he just doesn't look to have a fantasy game, but with a hamstring now, he's a trade. And my last negative, who was my hero last round in Andrew Brayshaw, at 760k, he could only manage a 63 this round. Whilst I know it's not really his fault, he got a really hard tag from Ed Kerno all game, 
Um, it's still not the scores you want to be seeing from your premium players, but he will bounce back this week against Hawthorne, where we did just see Guthrie and Mitch Duncan both score 130 plus. So I'm not worried there at all, but that's another reason why I scored so poorly this round. Rucks have certainly been the talking point this year so far, and in the early rounds, those that went with a Wits, a Draper, uh, with a Flynn on the field, were rewarded greatly early, as Flynn scored lots of points, and both Grundy and Gorn were down significantly. But this week, with favorable opponents, the writing was on the wall, and we saw exactly what I expected to see in both Grundy and Gorn going bananas. So this week with my ruck combo of Wits and Flynn, I managed to score 144 points. Whereas those that had Grundy and Gorn netted themselves a huge 287 points. And if they loopholed Grundy, they would have got 439 points just from those two players. So. That's a 300 point difference right there. And those that did go with the set and forget combo definitely look to have come out on top. With Wits now injured, Draper injured, and there not really being many value rucks around, I think the set and forget play at this stage is the winning combo. And those that do have Wits and are looking to trade this week, I think that your only option is to really go up to Grundy or Gorn. I think having at least one of these guys is a must have going forward from this point. I said in my round one review video that those that had Grundy and Gorn don't trade, hold on to these guys as coaches in the top 100 would have low ownership on these guys as most people would have a Flynn, a Wits, a Draper, etc. I think that with Grundy and Gorn both bouncing back and having big games this round, a lot of guys that were sitting outside that top 100, maybe around that 1,000, 2,000 rank have significantly climbed back up. And that just goes to show what I was saying in terms of having those unique premium guys that can go big and boost you up the rankings early. This is why it's important to consider ownership and not just ownership in terms of the number that you see on fantasy when you click on a player's profile, but you wanna be thinking about ownership in terms of top 100 and what, what these top ranked coaches have in their side. Because at the end of the day, they're the guys that you're competing against. They're the guys that you're trying to get ahead of. So looking at the ownership of those players can enable you to get some sort of unique options that can boost you through the ranks a little bit. This kind of ties in with the point that I made last week as well about holding your premium players. So those that had Andrew Gaff, Lockie Neal, Adam Trelaw, Jake Lloyd, these types of players, I suggested to hold. Don't waste a trade on them. They're top premiums, they'll bounce back and what did we see this round? All these players scored over 100. So those are guys that I would categorize as relatively unique. Although guys like Lockie Neal have a higher ownership, guys in the top 100 teams wouldn't own Lockie Neal due to being so poor at the start and his scores being down. On the flip side, these are now guys that you want to look to target and bring into your side as they've lost a lot of coin early, they've dropped in value, and they're now at a much more favorable price to select. The next takeaway I got from this round is the fact that key forwards could potentially be of some relevance this year. With the faster ball movement, we're seeing forwards get much more one-on-one -on -one opportunity inside 50 due to team zone defense being less effective, along with the fact that the faster ball movements creating more space inside 50. So we're seeing these leading key forwards be able to get into the space, take marks on the lead. And as a result, we're seeing big bags of goals kicked. So just this weekend, we saw Bruce kick 10, which is unheard of these days. 
Harry Mackay kicked seven, Tex kicked another bag of six. And these goal tallies are stuff that we haven't seen in previous years for a long time. So I think there will be more goals scored this year. And I'm just touching on this as a lot of people will look to bring Tex Walker in this week and will be asking me about my opinion on it. I think that it's viable for sure. In previous years, I would have said no, but he will make a lot of money in the short term. And he comes up against North Melbourne this week, who Bruce kicked 10 on last week. So he's kicked over five goals in every game. You'd think he probably kicks another five against North. He's going to be in for a decent score, even if he only manages 80 points, which he should be able to do. He's going to make a lot of coins, so I think you can do it, but you just need to be prepared that you could potentially get stuck with him with all the injuries we're seeing. And the other thing is you will need to use another trade on him at some point because the likelihood that he's going to finish as a top forward is super low. So they're just a couple of things you need to consider, but I don't think it's the worst play that you can do. If we take a look at some of the carnage that we saw in round three and some of the popular guys in particular. So firstly, we have Jared Witts. What I advise with Witts is I think you really only have one option and that's to go straight to Grundy or Gorn potentially. If you have Witts at your R2 and you already have Grundy or Gorn, I think there is potential for you to go down and get Flynn on the field, but I still think the Grundy-Gorn combo is the way to go as if you're downgrading, most likely you're gonna be going to Meek. And I just don't think that Meek is gonna be in the side for much longer. Darcy's getting fitter. He's been looking quite good. Tracy's now available to come into the side and Meek in the ruck last week, they got beaten pretty bad around the contest. So they could look to push Darcy up into the ruck, drop Meek and play Tracy up forward as a better forward option who can then pinch hit when needed. I think this comes with a little bit of risk, this move. And that leads me on to the, the next point of would you trade Wits all the way down and play both Flynn and Meek on the field? I've had this question a little bit already, and my answer to that is definitely not. There's way too much risk to be playing the two rookie rucks on the field at this stage. Hunter looks like he's done for the year with Marshall to come back. Ryder's just started training. Um, Meek, iffy job security. The only one you can be confident with is Flynn. So, I think he's the only one you can have on the field. Grundy and Gorn look the combo, and that's what I'd be trying to achieve as early as possible. So wits to one of those two, now's the perfect opportunity to get one of those guys in. With Hayden Young, I think you have a few options. You can opt for all three being the downgrade, the straight swap, or the upgrade. If you're opting to downgrade, it looks like Luke Parks and Burgess are gonna be the two most popular options. And out of those two, I think I like Burgess the most. Jared Witts has done his ACL and will be out for the season. Sam Day, he's injured. Zach Smith is coming back from injury, but he's still about a month away. So Gold Coast are gonna to have to ruck Burgess and therefore, he should see decent scoring. He scored well on the weekend. And whilst he's going to get dominated in the ruck, his mobility, I think around the ground, he'll be able to lay some tackles, take some marks on the wing, and he should score pretty well. So he's probably my pick of the bunch in defense. If you're looking to do a sideways move, there's a few options. Popular ones include Cumming and CJ. Out of those two, I think I like coming the most just for the fact that he's taking a lot of the kick-ins. Having that kick-in ability just gives you that baseline of points and CJ doesn't look to be getting kick-ins at all. So you have that little bit of a safety net with coming and therefore I'd probably be looking to give him the nod just ahead of CJ, although both could be good options. And if you already have coming, 
then you could look to bring CJ in as a replacement. If you've got coin there, it's a great opportunity to do an upgrade as well. I think Jake Lloyd is good to bring in. He's dropped a little bit from his starting price, about 80 odd K. I always say don't pay top dollar for your premiums and that you want to target them when they're at a low point. And Lloyd's getting pretty close to that. So I think that Jake Lloyd's a good target. Jordan Ridley could be an option. I think Callum Mills, Rory Laird, any of those guys, if you don't have any of those guys, I'd be targeting them as premium defense options. As for Cornelio, I think your hands are tied there. You're probably just doing a straight swap to another premium player. You could get tricky and do some DPP and go to a Tex Walker and bank a little bit of cash and do a couple of different tricky moves there, but I think you just got to match and go like for like. So I'd be going Cornelio to one of these fallen midfield premiums like a Trelaw or a Gaff, for example. You could even look at Taranto if you don't have him, providing that he's going to be in the midfield mix consistently. You could look at some mid-price options like Rory Sloan, uh, Darcy Parrish, but doing a move like this doesn't really get you that much cash and it doesn't really cost you much more to get Canelio up to a proven guy. So I'd be going with the, the premium option there as the guy that you bring in, you likely won't have to trade again. Whereas if you bring in a Sloan or a Parrish, you'll probably have to waste another trade on them to get to a primo later. So that's just my stance on those three guys, what I think you should be looking to do with them. As for what I'm looking to do this round, very straightforward. I've got Young and Wits, so I'll be going down to Burgess and then I'll be using the other trade to get to Grundy. This likely won't change regardless of what happens. If I have other carnage, other injuries, say a Jordan Clark gets dropped for example, I'll just bench him this week and play someone that I have on the pine for one week and deal with that problem later. I think there's not really much that's going to change what I do this week with my trades. Well, there you have it, guys. That's my round three review. How I went, how I ranked, how I saw things this round. If you've got any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. and I'll make sure to answer them. As always, if you've enjoyed the content, smash the like button. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in a bag filled. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school.